All right, Drive Radio fans, John Rush, your host today. My son, Richard Rush, is behind the camera. We're going to do the long version of this review. This is the 2015 Range Rover Evoque. So we're going to take a walk around the car. Well, of course, we'll go for a drive. We'll come back. We'll show you the interior. But let's get right into this Range Rover Evoque. Again, 2015. This car is 50745 the way this particular vehicle is equipped. It does have some options on it that we'll talk about in a minute. But let's take a quick walk around. We'll start at the front of the vehicle, then we'll walk around it. I will say this is one of the most stylish, I think, good-looking SUVs in the market. It's a smaller SUV. I'll show you the back seat later when we get into the interior portion. Uh, this car does not have adaptive cruise. Richard's showing you the front. There are some cameras that show a full circle view of the vehicle, which is kind of a cool feature. We'll talk about that later when we get into the interior portion. Uh, it's a good looking car. It's got a, a sloping roof line that slopes back that gives it a really unique look. It does affect the, the headroom for the back seat passengers. Again, I'll talk about that when we get into that earlier or, or later, I should say, in the video. It does have a full glass roof that Richard is just showing you right now. The downside is it does not open. It's a glass roof. It's got a, a cloth shade that actually opens and shuts, but outside of that, you cannot, you know, there's no ventilation through the roof, is what I'm trying to get at. It does have a really cool looking spoiler back here. This is a, a piece that's a, you know, it's a plastic piece that they add on to give it a different look. And it does look great. Of course, it has a rear hatch that opens up. We'll show you that here in a little bit. Two liter turbo engine. This car does run. I mean, it runs extremely well. You step on the gas and it goes. It really does work well as far as that goes. And again, this is one of these cars that people either, just in our experience, when we're driving it around, having people look at it, they either love the looks of it or they hate the looks of it. Now, I will tell you that I get a lot more loves than hates, but there are a few, there is a segment of the population out there that don't like the looks of the vehicle. Now, that's gonna be true with any car out there. Some people are gonna love the look of a car, some are not gonna like the look of the car. This particular vehicle, I do like the looks of it. This is the fastest selling Range Rover, Land Rover that they make. Again, let's go take a drive, we'll come back and we'll go through the interior. All right, folks, we're gonna now take a drive in the 2015 Range Rover Evoque, and we want to show you a, a couple of things that it's actually got. So touchscreen, which they've done a really good job of updating this. I like it. I like the new system. They've, they've done a great job. It works extremely well. So extra features. We can actually look at, you know, 4x4 data, which shows, you know, what's going on as far as the four-wheel drive system is concerned. If I want to return, I hit the arrow back. Again, go back into extra features. I can change the ambient lighting. If I want to go to the cameras, I can actually look at different camera views on the car. So right now I can see both front corners both rear and directly behind me. I can do a proximity view, which actually shows me how close I am to whatever's around me. So if I back in here next to the curb, for example, let me do that, and I apologize, we're trying to get the lighting just right. So let me get a little bit closer to the curb here, put it back in park. And you just heard the engine shut off because I actually have the start stop feature on right now. So you actually can see that now I've gotten closer to the curb. Again, just if, if some of you that are parking challenged or you're trying to, to back into a trailer, things like that, this does give you some nice options when it comes to actually seeing when it comes to, to seeing the, the camera views, I should say, of the car, what's actually around you. Tow assist, you can actually hit that and it gives you the ability to actually have some settings for different trailers that you would tow. I don't know that I would be a guy towing a big car trailer uh, you know, some of the smaller trailers that's listed here, I probably would do, but I'm, I'm a guy, frankly, uh, personally, that believes in having a vehicle that's big enough to tow what's behind you. Uh, trailers tend to push the vehicle in front of them around, especially if it's not loaded properly and all those things. So I'm a guy that, to be honest with you, I wouldn't tow anything major with this car. That's me. Land Rover, Range Rover might tell you differently, but that's just me personally. I would not talk. For example, I would not haul a horse trailer with this vehicle. That's me talking. Others may, may differ with me. So be it. Uh, let's go back to some of the other settings that are that are in here. So if I go back to the extra features, also have the eco data here, which you can look at the eco tips. It tells you exactly as you as this is on, it can actually tell you how to actually save fuel economy while you're driving the vehicle. Impact on fuel. Again, I've got the AC on. Uh, it, it'll just tell you as you're driving what's going on, whether you have lights on, whether you've got defrosters on, all those different things. Driving style is this button, and it just kind of tells you what's been going on with the last particular uh, uh, trip that you took, and so on and so forth. So, uh, with that, um, I tell you what, let's go take a quick drive, and I'll walk you through some of the other features that are on the vehicle as we're driving. All right, folks, so one of the things I wanted to also mention is we've averaged about 25 miles to the gallon in this car, and, and I will say the car runs phenomenal. So I'm going to go back to just a regular screen. The other thing that this car has, and, and we did not get a chance to play with it much, is it does have an app 
feature to the vehicle. It's, 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 a, it's what they use in, in conjunction with a smartphone. So it's got the ability to duplicate certain apps on the screen. The downside is you have to plug in physically with a cord. That does not happen with Bluetooth. Now, if somebody out there can verify that's different, please share that with me. But everything I've read so far, I have not tried it personally. You can. You plug in and it then shares some apps. You need to register with Land Rover and so on. That's one of those things that really you need to go to the dealership or go online and check that out for yourself. If that's a big deal to you, go figure that out for yourself. Personally, for me, everything I've got in my phone, I rarely plug in on a hard connection. Not a huge issue for me personally. I do have the start-stop engaged. I want to show you that real quick. We're going to take off. I'll get some speed up, and then I'm going to stop, and I'll show you what happens when you actually get to a stoplight, and this helps, this helps save fuel economy. So as I get up here and I make a full stop, the engine just shut off. As I release the brake now to go, the engine will then start, and off we go. And it's pretty responsive. Um, I've, I've not found myself shutting that on and off. It is something that you have to get used to, the start-stop technology on most of these new vehicles. It is something you do have to get a little bit used to and, and knowing that the vehicle is starting and stopping you know, at, at, at different times when you're actually at a stoplight or a stop sign. So as you can tell, the ride quality on this car is very good for being as short as it is. It works extremely well. It does have an active type all-wheel drive system that actually engages and disengages the four-wheel drive as needed. It's got different modes according to whether you're in sand, mud, snow, all those different things. That's done right here on the center console. Of course, the parking brake is down here in the middle. Ergonomically, again, I'll talk about this as we go through the interior, but real quick, ergonomically, the interior of the car is great, functions well, sound system is great, visibility is good. Even with the sloped roof, it's really good. It does have a small back window that you have to kind of get used to when you're looking out. I'm a guy that typically looks out the side view, side rear view mirrors anyways, so the small back window doesn't bother me personally, but for some of you, it may. That's why we always recommend you need to get out get inside this vehicle and drive it for yourself. I will say this car is exceptionally quiet for the small size that it is. A lot of times in the smaller vehicles, the noise gets to be bigger because your wheelbase is shorter. In this particular case, they've done a really good job with sound deadening and you really don't notice that side of it. It's really a nice, quiet, solid car. The car as you're driving it, it's nimble, it feels nimble, it parks well, it drives well, of course, because it is so small. Uh, you just you just feel like you're driving a, a smaller vehicle yet i will say it's got a pretty roomy inside even though from the outside looking in it's not it actually does give you some substantial room on the inside which i tell you what let's go back we'll stop and i'll walk you through the interior and i'll show you some of the features that it does have in that regard all right folks hope you enjoyed the drive of the 2015 range rover evoke again as you can tell made by land rover range rover you know, everybody makes mistakes. Some people call it a Land Rover. Some people call it Range Rover. It's actually a Range Rover made by Land Rover Evoque. We're going to open up the rear hatch. Hold that down. Automatic hatch comes up. Now, one thing that you'll notice when we get inside here is it doesn't have a super roomy, you know, it, it's a narrower car. So there's not a lot of width here. Now, one thing that we will point out, and if Richard can come around the side and show you, uh, if, if the lighting's tough, but there's a, there's a cavity right in here. So if you've got golf bags or something that you lay in here, believe it or not, this is deep enough to where the heads of the golf clubs actually stick into this cavity, enabling you to get at least a couple of bags in here. And again, got got nice tie-down system here in the back. That part I do like. This does lift up. Spare tire, of course, is underneath. Not much room to store anything other than the spare tire, so you're not going to get anything else in there besides just the spare tire. There is a power port back here, and of course it does have the privacy screen, and you'll see on the top here, it's kind of hard to see, but there are speakers, which just has a really, really nice sound system in it. Again, we can show you that. Uh, I'll, I'll point some of that stuff out as we get into the interior features. It does have an automatic close, so you just hit the button and it will close. Again, though, one thing that we need to point out is, as I climb into the back seat, if, if you're looking for a lot of room in an SUV, this is not the car for you. This is not going to be a, a, a car you're going to throw a bunch of car seats and a bunch of other stuff in the back of. This is not going to be your family truckster sedan that you're going to tote everybody around in. It's not meant for that. This is a sport what I would consider a sport SUV. Now, I don't know what the technical name of it would be, but that's what I would consider. This is a very much a, a sports car type feel when you're driving it. It handles well, drives well, has an active four-wheel drive system in it, or all-wheel drive system in it, I should say, that we talked about in the driving portion. It works extremely well, but it's not big. This car, as you can see, you know, look, I've got a, I'm 5'10", which means I've got a, a span of about 5'10". You can see that this car is not that big. Trying to get you any relation. It's hard to see in pictures, but just the car is not a big, big car by any means. As I climb into the back seat, as we always do, this seat is all the way back. In fact, I had somebody riding with me this weekend. It's about 6'2", so this seat is all the way back. I will say, my 6'2 passenger 
fit in the front seat just fine. Our two wives were back here in the back, and again, they're a little bit shorter, but they fit in just fine. There was plenty of room for the four of us, even with somebody that was six foot two in the front seat. So just something to note. So as I climb in the back seat, and as I know, as I talked about earlier, this sloping roof line, it does make this a little bit shorter for somebody that's taller getting in and out of the back seat. But as you can see, I'm 5'10", this seat's all the way back. I do have plenty of room. I mean, I don't I don't have a bunch of extra room, but my feet will go up in here. You know, it's, it's fairly comfortable. There's a fold down console in the middle, a couple of cup holders, and it does even have a small cavity in here. There's ventilation back here, but that's it. There are no power ports, nothing along those lines. And you'll see from up here, it does have the full glass roof. This does have a shade that closes and, you know, opens and closes, but this does not open up to allow any kind of ventilation. Again, you can see the speaker, the systems, you know, here. One thing that you'll note that, and, and again, I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking this. If Range Rover, you're listening, I'm not knocking this, but for $50,000, there is a lot of hard plastic that I would have liked to have seen more of, of some soft touch in some of these areas. You've got soft touch here, but that's it. The rest of this is hard plastic, hard plastic on the back of the seats. The mat pocket here there is soft touch around this area but but you know what for fifty thousand dollars i would expect a little bit more of some soft touch features back here that's just me personally so i'll tell you what i'm going to go around the pass or the driver's seat all right folks i'm now in the front seat of the 2015 range rover evoke and as you can see i have plenty of, of interior room i mentioned earlier that my six foot two passenger earlier over the weekend he had plenty of room there's an i'll start with the door panel you can see again two more actually three more speakers in that door panel uh, again, soft touch on the armrest itself, but that's it. The rest of it is sort of a hard plastic feel. Now, as we move into the dash area, this this is a, a softer touch as far as the actual top of the dash and the face of the dash. Nice brushed aluminum back here. It does give this a nice look. It's a good looking car on the interior. Ergonomically, everything is well within reach. I'm not stretching to do anything, whether it's the touch screen, the buttons on the side, the dual AC. Some downsides to this car, I'll mention it in my opinion, no heated or ventilated seats, no adaptive cruise. Frankly, Range Rover for 50,000 bucks, both of those need to be on this car. At least the heated and ventilated seats really should be in this particular car. You've got it in your other models, add it to the Range Rover Evoque. Steering wheel though, very nicely done. I talked about in the driving portion, the paddle shifters, of course, all your wipers on this side, turn signals and lighting on this side, uh, nice LCD screen in the middle to give you some other information on the vehicle itself. A comfortable car to drive. We talked about in the driving portion. That part of it works extremely well. Th again, this is a unique car. This is a car you need to get out, drive, check it out for yourself, see if it fits you and your family and your lifestyle. Again, I'll talk about here in the opinion portion in a minute when I come back some of the negatives of this car, but really what it comes down to is does this car fit your lifestyle? Only you can be the one that determines that. Don't look at the trolls that are on the internet. Don't look at everybody else's reviews. You have to be the one that actually go out, get in this car, drive it, and see if it fits your lifestyle. Don't just base it upon how it looks or how it runs. Make sure the car actually fits you. So let's do this. I'll come back and I'll give you my opinion of the 2015 Range Rover Evoque. All right, folks. Going to give you my opinion of the 2015 Range Rover Evoque. Beautiful car. I like the fit and finish of things. The car drives well, it handles well. Fuel economy was great. We mentioned that in the driving portion. Two liter turbocharged engine. Here in America, that's a, that's a gasoline engine. We do not have the diesel option like they have overseas. Is that a negative? Oh, not really. The car actually, the way it sits right now, works extremely well. Again, I mentioned this earlier, some of the negatives. For $51,000, which is about where this car is at, again, it's got some option packages on it. But, but in this particular vehicle, I wish it had a little bit more soft touching on the interior. I wish it had adaptive cruise control, and I really wish it had heated and ventilated seats. For $51,000 Range Rover, those are some things I think you could add for that particular price. Maybe you will in the near future, but right now, those of you watching this, that's not offered on the 2015 model. So keep that in mind as you're out shopping. Outside of that, really enjoyed this car. I love it. This is a hard car to give back because of how well the car actually works. And for me personally, in the lifestyle that I have, no more kids at home, it's just my wife and I, this car fits us size-wise perfectly, especially for a run around, around town car, but you're gonna have to be the judge of what fits you. Go check this car out at your local Range Rover, Land Rover dealer. Tell them that John and Richard Rush from Drive Radio sent you.